Yo, what's up guys? I am alive and, uh, you know, a person and I am here to bring you the videos. My description has all of this stuff. I'm sick of saying it. You freaking know it by now, so whatever. Um, sorry for getting aggressive. Here it is. Distribute candies to people. So this is a problem where we're distributing candies to people. It is an easy problem. So this is for you people that are, you know, just starting out in the algorithm game. This is a good problem for you. We distribute some number of candies. I don't know what number, but, you know, we have a bunch of candies. We're distributing them. And we've got, you know, some people, right? So we've got some candies, a number of candies. Maybe we got like 30 candies. You know, maybe I got like a pack of Starbursts and I got to share them between four people. Okay. Uh, we give one candy to the first person, two candies to the second person, and so on until we give N candies to the last person, which is kind of a scam. You know, if you're with your friends and then you're like, you know, it's like you give one to one person, then you give two to another, three to another, four to another. So, I mean, it's kind of weird. You know, you're just increasing as you go, but all right. Uh, then we go back to the start, and then we start giving N plus 1. Okay, so once you get to the end, you circle back, and then you give more. Okay, so it's not, you know, that's a little bit fair, because, you know, you might get 1 at first, but then it circles back, and you run out or whatever, you know. Um, so you go on, and then you just keep going until you run out of candies. Okay, you get it? So what's happening is we have four people, seven candies. So we're like, okay, one to you, two to you, three to you. And then we already ran out. We already used six. So we got one left. So we give it to the first, fourth person. Oh, well for them. That sucks. Um, another example. We got 10 candies and three people. Okay. So we're going to give one to the first person, two to the second person, three to the third person. And that's six used now. And then we've, we're at three. So now we're going to give four to the first person again. And that bumps them up to five. And that goes to 10. You know what I'm saying? One to the first person, two to the third, second person, three to the third, and then you circle back and you have to give four. But that person already has one. We already used six, so it gives a ten, and then we're good. Uh, let me know if you don't understand that. I think it's pretty clear. So I'm going to show you the way I solved it on stream earlier today. I also stream these if you want to check them out on Twitch and YouTube. Um, but um, yeah, the way I did it is you're going to, you have it, the output array is the same size as the number of people because we're just talking about how much candy each person gets, right? So output array, we can just initialize. We can be like, okay, output array is equal to new int array of num people size. Okay, we got our output array. That's what we're going to be returning here. We just got to fill it up now. I'm going to use a variable i to fill it up. And then I'm going to use a variable loops to count how many times we've looped. Then I'm going to say, okay, while candy is greater than zero, meaning, okay, while we have candy left to give these people, we're going to do this. We're going to say, okay, let's calculate the current candy that should be given. The current candy is going to be equal to the number of times we've looped times num people. Because if we've not, if we haven't looped yet, we're just gonna give zero, right? Because zero times whatever number of people, if it's four, is zero, plus i plus one. Um, in this case, we're, you know, and when it loops once, then you do one times number of people. So it just kind of keeps track of like the, um, yeah, the amount of loops you've done so that you can multiply by the number of people to see, you know, what value you should be given out. And then i is just, I is the index we're using for our array, but we're also going to use it to count the current, you know, candy amount. So it's going to be, you know, the, z the zeroth person, we're going to say, gets zero plus one. But it's actually the first person. It's just like an index thing. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so we'll do if candies minus current candy is less than zero. That means we don't have enough candy to give them. So we're going to just have to give them whatever's left which is just candies else then we could just give them what current candy is which is the amount they should be given and we actually have to do add because we're adding this on not saying equals my bad um so this is all good and then we just increment to i and what else do we do I think that's it. And then all you have to do is, oh, no, no, no. You have to decrement the amount of candy, obviously, because you're using candy each time. So just do candies minus equals current candy. 
And then right here, if i is equal to num people, then that means we have our index has accrued up to the number of people and we hit a loop. So we just set i back to zero and then we just do loops plus one, plus plus. So this might, I don't know, I think this is a little bit um, candies, my B, my B. Um, I think this is a good way for you to like know what's going on, I guess, before I show you the way better way to do it. So, you know, this is just a good way for me to have explained what's going on here. You're just taking the right value, giving it to the right person and then decreasing the amount of candies, right? But you, this is the exact same thing. This is doing literally the same thing. This dude wrote it, uh, Lee something. He's in all the, you know, he, I see him everywhere in these Lee code solutions. What he's doing is he's just doing the same thing I did, same concept, except what he's doing is he's looping, he's doing the loop, he's making sure candies is greater than zero, he's got the index, but he's just not making a loops variable. He's using math.min to avoid the if else. Um, so meaning if, and he's using i to keep track of the number we should be giving him and doing i mod n or i mod num people will give us the number of loops. This gives us the loops and the remainder after those loops to know what index we should be at. And then the, um, it also maintains the value because we're not changing it back to zero each time. So, you know, the i is always going to be the right value. The index, um, you know, mod num people gives us the right amount of loops and puts us at the right index. And the min gets rid of those if else conditions so that we can just check, okay, do we have enough candy left to give them? No, then just give them the rest. Uh, that's fine. So this solution is the same thing. You see it's got the same percentages and all that stuff, but it's a lot shorter. It's just maybe a little more confusing for anyone who's kind of starting out with algorithms because of the, you know, you got a little compound conditional here, you know, different variable than condition, and then you got the modulus that could be a little tough for people, and the math.min visualizing. So that's all it is. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to be uploading this right now. So, you know, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys. And um, I will see you in the next video. All right. See you guys.